Welcome back to our series of lectures on the fundamentals of logistics. My name is Chris Lee and over the course of these 14 lectures I will be providing a background of the profession of logistics and supply chain management. In our previous lecture we discussed how information technology impacts management of supply chains and decision making in logistics. In this lecture, I will be discussing how strategy and finance are used in the logistics field. Before we can discuss strategy and financial issues surrounding logistics, we first need to examine the basic financial terminology often used in business and logistics. Logistics managers in every organization are expected to use financial information to help them make decisions, allocate resources, and budget expenses. So having a basic understanding of financial terminology such as assets, the balance sheet, the income statement, expenses, also known as costs, revenue, also known as sales, and owner's equity is important for logistics managers. Let's examine these terms in a little bit more detail. Assets are what a company owns and come in two main forms. Current assets that can be easily converted to cash, such as stock, and long-term assets that have a useful life of more than a year, such as a company-owned warehouse. It is important to keep in mind that inventory can represent a significant part of an organization's current assets. Liabilities are the financial obligations a company owes to another party. Similar to assets, liabilities come in two main forms. Current liabilities, which need to be paid in less than a year and long-term liabilities, which are due over an extended period of time. Expenses, also referred to as costs, provide a dollar value for the cost incurred in generating revenue during a given period of time. Total expenses are made up of the variable and fixed costs that are not directly related to making the product or delivering the service. Revenues, also referred to as sales, provide a dollar value of all the products and or services an organization provides to their customers. Owner's equity is the difference between what a company owns and what it owes at any particular point in time. The income statement shows revenues, expenses, and profit for a period of time. It is sometimes referred to as a profit and loss statement, or P&L. In general, the income statement measures the profitability of the product and or service provided by a company. It reports the revenue generated by company activities during a given period of time, the expenses associated with achieving these revenues, and the profit or loss that is a result of these activities. Logistics managers should understand how logistics costs influence the profits or losses being incurred by their organization so that they can make appropriate business decisions. The balance sheet reflects the assets, liabilities, and owner's equity at a given point in time. The balance sheet equates assets with liabilities plus owner's equity. As in the case of the income statement, logistics can affect the balance sheet of an organization in several major ways. For instance, order cycle time, order completion rate, and invoice accuracy can influence the speed in which one's customers pay their invoices, thus directly affecting the cash and accounts receivables categories on the balance sheet. In logistics, it is important to connect strategy to financial performance. In this section of the lecture, we will discuss the levels at which strategy can be formulated, mainly the corporate level, business unit level, and functional level, 
and the four main business strategies. Cost leadership strategy, differentiation strategy, focus strategy, and information strategy. A recurring theme in logistics research is that successful organizations link logistics capabilities to objective as opposed to subjective organizational performance measures. This research asserts that logistics managers must continue to find ways to effectively communicate how these logistics capabilities provide value and ultimately support corporate strategy and success in financial terms. In business terms, strategy can be formulated at a corporate level, a business unit level, and a functional level. Corporate level strategy is focused on determining the goals for the company, the types of business in which the company should compete, and the way in which the company will be managed. Strategy at a business unit level is primarily focused on the products and services provided to customers and on finding ways to develop and maintain a sustainable competitive advantage in the marketplace with these customers. The functional level of the organization is where logistics resides. The strategic issues at this level are related to business activities that support the achievement of the higher level goal set by the executives in the business unit and at the corporate level. There are three main performance strategies businesses use. These include cost leadership strategy, differentiation strategy, and focus strategy. Because logistics concerns information, it is also important to touch on information strategy. A cost leadership strategy requires an organization to pursue activities that will enable it to become the low-cost producer in an industry for a given level of quality. A differentiation strategy entails an organization developing a product and or service that offers unique attributes that are valued by customers and that the customers perceive to be distinct from the competitors' offerings. A focus strategy concentrates an organization's effort on a narrowly defined market to achieve either a cost of leadership or differentiation advantage. Information strategy is the management of logistics activities with the goal of achieving coordination and collaboration through the full organization. This hierarchy of strategy requires a functional unit of an organization to provide input to the other levels of strategy formulation within the organization. The strategic profit model allows business managers to examine the best strategy to take to maximize profits. The strategic profit model includes current ratio, return on assets, also known as ROA, net profit margin, and asset turnover. As we discussed in the section on the income statement, profit is a basic financial measure that represents the difference between revenues and expenses. On the surface, it would seem that a raw number such as profit would seem to be adequate. But there are issues with reporting financial figures without providing an appropriate context for understanding those figures. This is why many financial measures are reported as ratios that indicate the relationship of one number to another. Ratios provide a point of comparison and can provide management with more information than raw numbers alone. The current ratio measures how well an organization can pay its current liabilities by using only current assets and is calculated by dividing total current assets by total current liabilities. Return on assets indicates what percentage of every dollar invested in the business ultimately is returned to the organization as a profit. 
One common measure of an organization's financial success is return on investment, or ROI. ROI is measured by return on net worth, or return on assets. Return on net worth measures the profitability of the funds that have been invested in the business and is of most interest to investors and in businesses and stock. Return on assets provides a more operational perspective of an organization by providing insight on how well managers utilize operational assets to generate business profits. This is why ROA becomes a key managerial tool for logistics profitability analysis. The formula for ROA is ROA equals net profit margin times asset turnover. Therefore, net profit margin and asset turnover are important in determining logistics efficiency. Together, they form the basis for computing ROA. Net profit margin measures the proportion of every sales dollar that is kept as profit. Asset turnover measures the efficiency of the capital employed to generate sales. Asset turnover is computed by dividing total sales by total assets and provides information on how efficiently capital is employed to support the business. The most relevant logistics asset is typically inventory. In addition, as was mentioned earlier, logistics decisions can influence the speed at which invoices are paid as reflected in accounts receivable on the balance sheet. In logistics, we use measures to determine how well we are doing to properly manage logistics activities. Typical logistics activities measures include transportation measures, warehouse measures, and inventory measures. The major transportation measures focus on such things as labor, cost, equipment, energy, and transit time. The diversity of equipment types, sizes, and products carried will complicate the performance measurement in this area of logistics. Measurements in this area include such items as return on investment, the investments in transportation equipment, outbound freight costs, transportation labor productivity, on-time deliveries, and in-transit damage frequency. Performance measures in warehousing are used to identify design and operations options that provide benefits in terms of increased speed or reduced costs. The primary warehousing measures include such things as labor, cost, time, utilization, and administration. As was the case with transportation, the diversity of warehouse types, sizes, and products carried will complicate the performance measurement in this area. Some common macro-level measurements focused on warehousing include return on investment, warehouse order processing costs, and warehouse labor productivity. Inventory management measures relate to the inventory service levels provided to customers as well as the controlling inventory investment across an organization's logistics system. Some common performance measures include obsolete inventory, inventory carrying costs, inventory turnover, and information availability. In this lecture, we discuss the importance of strategy and finance in logistics.
In our next lecture, we will discuss organizational and managerial issues in logistics. My name is Chris Lee, and it's been my pleasure to have you join us as we explore the wonderful world of logistics. I hope you can join us for our next presentation and invite you to reach out to me if you've got questions on this lecture or ideas for future lectures at chrisnlee07 at hotmail.com. Mm -hmm.